All right, welcome back to the final video of this incredibly long uh, stiffness method example. Here we're going to solve for M3 and M4 and figure out what the internal reactions are for members 3 and 4 or elements 3 and 4. Um, here I just drew the K matrices for um, members 3 and 4 just to save a little bit of time. Um, so let's start with M3. We have our stiffness matrix here. And remember for our stiffness matrix for element 3 we have a degree of freedom of 2, 3, 8, and 9 where 2 and 3, 2 and 3 are the unrestrained. 2, 3, 8, and 9, 8, and 9. And then to that we multiply um, our, you know, 1 over EI, our delta sub 3. And our delta sub 3 well, it's the deformations at element 3. So for 2 and 3, our deformations are right here, 0 and negative 1728 over 7, right? So you have 0 and negative 1728 over 7, and then uh, the restrained ones don't have deformations, right? So those are zero. And then to that we add FM3. And if you recall, FM3 was 54, negative 54, 18, and 18. And if you solve that out, our reactions uh, that correspond to degrees, degree of freedoms 2, 3, 8, and 9, um, are 186 over 7, negative 762 over 7, 94 over 7, and 158 over 7. Okay? So that means if we drew member 3, here's element 3, and it has, you know, the distributed load up on top we're gonna have 2 and 3 were rotational right so 186 clockwise 186 over 7 kip foot and then here we have a negative that means it was going the other um, opposite of our assumption for a degree of freedom um, that's not negative that's just 762 over 7 and then you have your 8 and 9 correspond to the vertical reactions right 94 over 7 kip and then 158 over 7 kips right and for element 4 sorry this is getting a little messy so I'm gonna kinda divide this right so this is now we're doing um, member 4 and member 4 uh, that corresponds to a degree of freedom 3 5, 9, and 10. And 3 was our unrestrained. 5, 9, and 10. 5, 9, and 10. And then you have a 3 here. And to that we multiply our deformation um, for element 4. Remember 3 uh, was negative 1728 over 7 and again this is 1 over EI and then 5, 9, and 10 are 0, 0, and 0, right? They're restrained, they won't move plus our FM let's see, FM4 which was another column vector we had um, 150 negative 150 33 and 33 and if we solve this out we should get we get a little crammed um, 762 over 7 negative 1194 over 7 213 over 7 and 249 over 7 it's a 49 okay and if we drew out element three, or I'm sorry, element four, uh, it had a distributed load and then an 18 kip load on top. And three 
is our rotational and 5. 3 and 5 are both rotational degrees of freedom so these two values we get are moments. So on the left side it's positive, it's 762 over 7 and on the right side it's negative so that means it's going clockwise 94 over 1194 over 7 kip foot kip foot kip foot and then our vertical is um, 213 over 7 and 249 over 7 249 over 7 and both of these are kips all right so Thank you for bearing with me through this very, very long example. Um, hopefully the stiffness method, um, my the way I do it, um, makes a little bit more sense now. Um, again, you can run through these videos uh, to make sure you understand the concepts. Uh, really, the stiffness method is not that hard. It's just very tedious, as you just saw. Um, and I hope all this helped. All right.